Hey guys, Sam from DigiSearch here, um, and I just wanted to take you through a quick video on data preparation. So I'm going to be running through a heap of different Excel dashboards and, and different ways we can interpret SEO and other data using Excel. And the basis of this is making sure that your data is set up correctly. Now it doesn't take too long at all, and this should be a nice quick video for you, but we still need to make sure we get it right. If you set up your data correctly, you get the process down pat, you don't have to worry about it in the future because no matter how you're going to interpret your data, it's going to be set up correctly. So the first thing is just making sure that we've got file naming set up correctly. Now, once you actually start digging into this, you're going to constantly create new spreadsheets. You're going to constantly iterate on existing spreadsheets. And I do advise that you now and then save one of those files as a backup. So you don't not just constantly updating the same one. You just now and then jump to a new file. So you always have a history there. So you always have something you can revert back to nice and easily. So now to do this without having constant issues in the future, you need to get your naming conventions right. For this one, just data preparation, and then it's the date here on the end. Now this is backwards because that allows Microsoft to more efficiently sort the name. So you always have the latest at the top. Now, some people run off date modified, but I suggest against it. If you accidentally open one of the old ones and press save, that date modified gets overwritten and you could start editing an older file and overwriting an older file and then missing out on changes you made in the newer one. So what you do is you just put the full date here, so 2016. You put your month then, so 06, and then you put your day, so 26. It just means that if when I create a second version, say 0627, that next number then sits underneath it. Now, because the date's backwards, it means no matter what year it is, that it slowly builds out, down, or up, depending on how you sort the files. It makes it a lot easier to retrieve the latest file for you. Okay, and now the next bit is just setting up the spreadsheet. So once you've created that new spreadsheet, you're gonna end up with a blank sheet like this. Now, I always will immediately create a second tab, and I'm gonna call this something around raw. Now, I normally just say raw, some of my other spreadsheets say different things, but you straight away just create this second tab. Now, this is to make sure that anything we're um, doing with the data stays separate from the actual data itself. So raw is my tab that just contains my information. I'm not gonna be adding designing to it, I'm not gonna be adding any of that, just like number formatting, um, and just current like currencies, percentages, that sort of stuff. But I'm not going to change your colors. I'm not going to do any of that here. That's what this first sheet will be for. And so, yeah, to separate them, I normally just call this one dashboard or or whatever it actually is, um, because this allows us to just maintain the separation between the two. Okay, so looking at this reward tab, um, the first thing you've got to do is create a table. Now, depending on what you're looking at, you're going to have different uh, metrics. You're going to have different items here. So what we might look at is say landing page, let's go um, month, visits, conversions, revenue. Revenue. And then you're obviously gonna have to have some data here. And what you do is you just highlight it here, you go up to insert and then click table. Now click, my table has headers, so that it doesn't push the headers down and create a, a separate set of headers at the top. Click OK, and there you go. You basically got your table set up. Now, before I go on again, um, just up here, make sure it's on Table Tools Design, and then just change the table name to something like Roar. This will help us in the future when we're trying to actually reference this table, um, because this is going to have all our data in it. Okay, uh, the next thing we're going to look at here is the month setup. So most of the time when you have, say, a month, you might go, uh, let's, June 16. We'll do this. So June 2016. Now, there's a couple of ways you can actually use this date. Just having the date like this, we can easily create a, uh, a constant graph. So a graph that goes, say, January 15 all the way through to June 16. But when playing with it, you can't actually split out that 2016 onto two separate lines and maintain consistency in the data. Well, I haven't easily been able to anyway. So what you're gonna do is 
add in a couple extra dates. Now, I normally have a month. I then have two other columns added in behind it. So I have month, I have month alone and year. So month alone, I'm going to put June or Jun for the three characters. Um, and year, I'm going to put 2016. So this will allow me to filter out June and 2016 from this month. Um, and that allows us to do easily do year on year graphs. So you could have uh, Jan through December 2015 and then Jan to June 2016 in a different color just to show that year on year difference. Um, and this is pretty much it. You just make sure that you have this table separated from your other table and then it just comes down to whatever data you want to put in here. So how does this look with some actual data in it? So I've just got a couple a couple existing setups here that I thought I'd quickly just show you. Um, now this is one that is from a performance snapshot from using Google Analytics data. And what you can see here is that I've got the month, I've got month alone, I've got year, I've got channel, so organic paid direct referral. Now then here I've got analytics month. Um, so this analytics month is what's coming out of GA. So Google Analytics is giving me this analytics month. It's not giving me anything else. So I've got a table on the right hand side. It's just a simple VLOOKUP uh, to get the month, month alone and, and year out of it. So you can see here, there's the, there's the formula there. Um, and that's just allowing me to pull these metrics. So as soon as I export Google Analytics, I don't need to manually input these all the time. It just needs to do a quick VLOOKUP there. Um, and then I got the visits, conversions, revenue, which this didn't have anything bounce rate and average session duration if I wish to use it. So the reason, well, what's happening here is that each line item is a month of a single data point. So you wouldn't have Jan 14, Feb 14, March 14, etc. in different columns. You need to have them as rows. So by having them as rows, when we start getting into pivot tables, you can actually compare the data more efficiently. You can do month on month changes, all that sort of stuff. And it just makes it for a lot cleaner uh, data. When you've actually set this up, but knowing that from the start, it doesn't matter where you get your data from, you can kind of easily format it into this format rather than having multiple formats as well. Now, there is one thing I use uh, a separate method for and that's just because I can't do what I want to do uh, with this setup and that's for keyword rank tracking. So looking at this example here of a rank tracking a raw file you can see how the setup is here I've got August 15, September 15, October 15 and November 15 separated in columns. Now I told you just before that this isn't how you should be doing it However, for some keyword rank tracking, I do. Now there's two reasons. The first one being keyword categorization. So I'm using this categorization formula here that I'll get into in a later video. Um, but once you start getting month on month for say 10,000 plus keywords, you get six to 12 months. You've got 50 to 100,000 rows straight away that's running this formula every time you add new numbers to it or you update the, the categories, etc. And so that puts a lot of demand on Excel and it does take ages to update the file, which is an absolute pain in the ass. So doing this way avoids that because you only have to categorize each keyword once. And then the second reason I'm doing it this way is something to do with the average rank within the pivot tables here. So coming over here, there was an issue I was having uh, whereby the average rank wasn't averaging properly if I was doing it the other way. By doing it this way, I can maintain an average rank at both the uh, wedding subcategory level and the keyword level. Now, if I did it the other way, that number just wasn't working out properly. So by doing this way, I just know I was mitigating that. Um, so I'm just getting that, that file the right way that I'm after. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much how the raw is working. And so, yeah, that's the basis of data preparation. You just got to make sure that you have your, your rows as each item, not columns.
with the exception of that rank tracking, just so it worked properly. Uh, but thanks for checking out my video. There will be plenty more to come. And please feel free to comment any feedback, and I can make improvements for the future ones. Thanks, guys.